Hi, I'm Kevin Borland. I'm a music producer, a guitarist, and a lawyer. I'm going to tell you about an ongoing culinary adventure I embarked on this summer, and I encourage you to join me. Not just by watching my videos, but try it in your city. My quest began Monday, July 25th, 2016, when I set out to cycle through the world's 206 ethnic cuisines on my lunch breaks. I call it the No Repeat Nationality Workday Challenge. In the previous episodes, I sampled 41 ethnic cuisines, mostly in and around the Washington, D.C. metro area. In this sixth episode, I'm going to get you all up to speed because I'm already on my 62nd nationality in real time. I should add that this week I had a technical problem. My main hard drive went down and I lost three weeks worth of video footage. Luckily, I had shared some of the still shots and short videos with some of my friends on Facebook, so I'm still able to document that portion of my journey. I learned a valuable lesson, though, that if you're eating while working, to always keep your laptop at a higher level than any glasses of liquid that may topple over and wreak havoc. My 42nd nationality was Georgian. Georgia the country, of course, not the U.S. state. I went to the Compass Rose restaurant where I tried cacciapori and some Georgian ricazzatelli wine. Cacciapori is a flatbread similar in character to pizza, but with an interesting twist. At the table, a raw egg was dropped into a pool of melted cheese sauce and then stirred until it reached a uniform consistency. Then I was instructed to wait two minutes to eat to allow the egg to properly cook. The wine was an amber color and it suited the meal very well. On the 43rd day of my challenge, I sampled food from Tunisia. I had chicken skewers with couscous and peanut sauce. It was really good and I had an aha moment after I took the first bite. I realized that the dish was the missing link between the goat mafe I tried at the Sierra Leonean restaurant and the Southeast Asian dish satay, with which I was very familiar having spent a lot of time in Thailand. The dish must have traveled across the Sahara to Tunisia, where it underwent some Mediterranean influence, and then spread east to Indonesia along with the expansion of Islam, where it underwent some Southeast Asian influence. From meal number 44, I went to Roos Ooze in Arlington, Virginia to try lamb plov, the most widely eaten dish in Uzbekistan. Plov is the Uzbek word for rice pilaf. I also tried a dessert called chak chak. Nationality number 45 was Turkmenistan. I had lamb manti. Manti are a type of Turkic dumpling popular throughout the Silk Road region. Number 46, Canada. I went to the Elephant and Castle and tried poutine. The dish is basically french fries with gravy and cheese curd. Tasty, but maybe not the most healthy of meals. For my 47th meal, I went to Corrado's restaurant in DC's Mount Pleasant neighborhood. The cuisine they serve there is from Guatemala. I tried the sirloin steak with chimol salsa and avocado. It reminded me a lot of the food I ate when I visited Guatemala during college. Number 48, Ireland. At the Fado Irish Pub in DC's Chinatown, they told me the most authentic Irish dish on their menu was the Irish breakfast. So I had breakfast for lunch. The meal consisted of sausage and eggs, rashers, black and white pudding, and Guinness cheddar bread. Rashers are thin slices of fried ham. Black and white pudding aren't pudding at all, at least in the American sense of the word. In Ireland, pudding is a type of sausage. Both tasted a bit of iron as they must have contained organ meat and the black pudding more so. Black pudding is a type of blood sausage, so it contained the animal's blood. Number 49, Trinidad and Tobago. I went up to the Shaw neighborhood where I found a restaurant serving Trinidad-style curried chicken. For meal number 50, I drove all the way down to Charlottesville, Virginia to the Shabin restaurant where the chef is from Zimbabwe. I tried sadza cakes with mixed vegetables. That's S-A-D-Z-A. Sadza is a corn-based staple similar to polenta. Number 51, and continuing to explore food from the southern parts of Africa, I had squash and peanut stew with pap-pap, representing the cuisine of Lesotho. Pap-pap is a staple food in Lesotho, and it's a type of cornmeal. My 52nd ethnicity was South Africa. I had lamb curry poti with rice and monkey bread. The curry was a fusion of Malay and Dutch cuisine. In fact, this dish is particularly popular around the vicinity of Cape Malay. The monkey bread, like an African coffee bread, was a nice treat. 
Number 53, Botswana, the land of the Bushmen. I had a dish called dikobe, which was a mixture of samp and beans. Samp consists of ground corn kernels, not unlike hominy in the southern United States. I rounded out the 11th week of my journey at the Rural Society restaurant downtown in DC, not far from my work. The food was Argentinian and of excellent quality, one of my favorite meals for my adventure so far. I tried three small dishes, morcilla, morrones, and empanada tucumana. Morcilla is Argentine blood sausage, totally different than the Irish variety I tried earlier. The taste was much more balanced and refined. Morrones were deconstructed finger foods consisting of bread, oil-soaked red bell peppers, whole salted anchovies, and eggplant goat cheese puree. Absolutely delicious. Empanadas are popular throughout South America, but the chef did them just right here, too. Ethnicity number 55 was Lebanese. I went back to Zaytinya, a Turkish and Lebanese restaurant near my office, and this time I had kibbe naya, or raw minced lamb and beef. Eating raw red meat made me a little nervous, I admit, but it was a flavorful dish. For number 56, I trekked to Arlington to the house of Mandy to try Yemeni cuisine. I had Mandy lamb and I was not disappointed. It tasted really good and the portion size was huge. Number 57, Qatar. Straight out of Doha, I tried Qatar's national dish, Makbus chicken, a tasty rice dish with nuts and herbs. Number 58, Fettuccine alla Papalina, the Pope's pasta, representing the cuisine of Vatican City. This meal was designed to suit the taste of Pope Pius XII and is still served in the Vatican City today. The sauce was creamy and it had ham and cheese components. This was a short week on account of Columbus Day. I started the 13th week with Tama from the Pacific Island nation of Palau. I would classify Tama as a type of donut, but not overly sweet like the donuts popular in the United States. Yes, I know that's a dessert more than a meal, but hey, my game, my rules. For my 60th cuisine, I tried Emadachi from the Himalayan nation of Bhutan. That was the spiciest dish on my journey so far, with the cuisine from Kenya a close second. It consisted of vegetarian chili cheese stew served over red rice. Yesterday, number 61, I had a dish called La Bandera that I took to go from Los Hermanos restaurant in Columbia Heights. Los Hermanos serves food from the Dominican Republic, and La Bandera refers to the flag of that country. Elements included chicken and beef with gravy, beans and tomato sauce, rice, and plantains. Today's dish, number 62, was from the Polynesian island nation of Tonga. It's called Hakakumala Loloi, literally, sweet potato boiled in coconut cream. I like this a lot. The two flavors go really well together. I'm going to post new episodes every Thursday night on YouTube and on my Facebook fan page until I complete my journey. Be sure to tune in next Thursday when I sample food from Southeast Asia and Northern Africa. I also encourage you to either subscribe to my YouTube channel or like my Facebook page or both. If you do, you'll get to hear a lot of my music and keep tabs on some of the other interesting projects I'm working on. And also, sharing is caring!